you get your own strategy to navigate life and business. So, and by strategy means how can we make life easy for you? Are you ready to live your best life, make healthy choices, have success, have fun, and still have time for everything else? I'm here to teach you how to do that. And we'll all learn together from guests along the way as well. Follow along for some powerful tips on cultivating gratitude, making healthy choices for mind and body and having fun doing it. What if all the angst and worry actually don't help? Oh my goodness, let's keep learning how to do this differently. OMG, welcome friends. I am excited about today's episode because I am going to be learning something new as well right along with you. So that goes along with my theme, I suppose. We're all going to be learning today. And today I have with me Nicoline Housingha, who is a certified business mentor, human design coach, speaker, and author of the book series, Flick the Effort Switch. And I edit that to keep my clean rating. She ignites the fire in entrepreneurs by helping them to tap into their core, embrace their unique skills and talents, and to take action on a personalized strategy so they're able to run a successful business on their own terms. She has 13 plus years experience, a creative mind, and strong intuition. And she also, just for our interest, loves to read, loves cold water swimming, and enjoys James Bond movies as a guilty pleasure. She is from the Netherlands, and so her native tongue is Dutch. She also speaks English, of course, and German and French and studies Spanish. So I love that because I'm kind of a secret language lover. That's kind of cool. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. So uh, I'm so happy to be here. So thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. I'm happy that it worked out. And let me just tell my listeners that what we're going to be talking about today is human design. And I have been curious about this for a little while. I am familiar with Enneagram. I am familiar with, of course, various other types of personality assessments that we do. And I think they have value. It's really interesting to learn about our talents and the way we think and the way we might respond to things. And human design, in my layman's terms, feels like it's sort of taking a combination of those things and maybe even taking it a bit farther. So I'm excited to learn more. Can you give us a basic overview of what human design means and how it can help people? Yes, that's a great question because I hear so many people who have heard about human design, but they're not really sure how it works and what the value is of it. So first of all, human design is a personality definition system that's based on a four, I would say, more spiritual learnings and one scientific element. So the four spiritual learnings are the modern astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah, and the Hindu Brahma Chakra work. And it combines it with quantum physics. And that is really interesting because quantum physics is all about energy. And yes. that's what human design describes. So when you put in your date of birth, time of birth, and place of birth. You get a personalized profile. And from that, you can learn so many elements of your personality. And there is a huge difference compared to the systems that you just described, because Enneagram, MBTI, you know, all these elements are all based on questions. So it's it's like an assessment. But human design is just, just between air quotes, based on your date of birth, time of birth, and place of birth. And at first, when I got to know it, I was like, how can this be accurate? You know, it's like an astrology thing. So it's right. like your, your sign of the zodiac and you're like, yeah, you know, it's very generic and superficial, but it's incredibly spot on. And uh, so far, I've always been surprised and my clients have been surprised and everyone I talk to about human design has been surprised about the accuracy of the description because basically what you get with your human design is your own user manual. So it shows you 
you how your energy system works. It shows you how you're wired, how you operate, in what sense you're sensitive to other influences around you. And it shows you your best deciding decision-making system. So it's, it's like a valuable tool that gives you great insights for life and for business. Wow, that's fascinating. And I love that you said quantum physics too, because actually the very first episode of this podcast, I talked about everything is energy mm-hmm. and the Albert Einstein quote that goes along with that. And that is very much quantum physics. Yes. So, well, you hooked me with that. I'm fascinated. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And you know, for me, that was the deciding factor whether or not to to really trust this, because, you know, we can be very spiritual and woo woo, but this is like, you know, energy, we can measure energy. It's like electricity. We don't see it, but we know it's there. I mean, when you plug in a device, you know whether or not there's electricity. And it's the same with energy. When we use our body and mind, we know whether or not there's energy or not. So I think yes. it's it's really an important element that not many people know about. So when they hear about human design, they are like, yeah, well, you know, hmm, it's woo woo. It's too spiritual. It's based on your date of birth, time of birth and place of birth. No, not scientific enough. Thanks. But when they hear about the quantum physics element, they are like, oh, interesting. Tell me more. <laughs> I can see that for sure. Yes. And I've actually, I sort of on an acquaintance level know a few people who are getting interested in human design and I've seen what they've commented on social media and things and really saw that it was fascinating. So I'm in definitely. And so tell us, how did you get interested in this? Yeah. So I've been an entrepreneur now for 13 years and for the first eight years I was doing fine. I had my coaching practice and I was working with clients and it was good but at some point I felt like you know something is missing and I have a coaching and training background I'm a certified coach and a certified trainer so I did a lot with you know the regular assessments like MBTI disc insights you know all these I would say more corporate tools um but I didn't really feel that I could use them so at some point I I got my human design profile from someone in my network and uh, she said you know you should read this because I think you will be fascinated by this. And I read it and it was my own human design profile. So based on my date of birth, time of birth and place of birth. And I was like, whoa, this is really fascinating. Just based on these three elements, I got a report that was so spot on. And what it did for me was uh, that it showed me all the elements that I had always known my entire life, but I never really trusted. And I always always thought that those were the things that I had to change. So when I read it, I was like, oh, wow, this is really fascinating. So I really went deep into it. And I started studying for myself in the first place, uh, to be honest, Uh, because I I truly believe as a coach, we need to know exactly what we're talking about, not just, you know, know the theory and not having fully embodied and lived the entire thing ourselves. So I really went deep on it. And I found out about my own human design and how I could use it. And when I started using it, I was fascinated because my life got so much easier and so much more fun and it was so much more in flow. And I just stopped doing the things that didn't work for me anymore. So that was really a huge relief. And then I was like, oh, but let me try this with my clients. So at first, you know, I just asked my clients, would you like to be a guinea pig? Uh, Because we're going to test something new and they were hooked from the very first minute and and that's now five years ago. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I like the way, I agree with you, actually. I am right now working on a certification to be a leadership coach. And one of the things we do is coach each other. You have to be very well-versed in whatever you're coaching as well as maybe have used it on yourself and just be familiar at that deep level. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you, well, how has this changed your life now that you knew it about yourself? And you kind of answered answered that already. But do you have 
any maybe anecdote about something you learned about your personality that now is different? Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a few examples. So first of all, I have, I grew up being very sensitive and people always told me like, oh, you're overly sensitive. You know, you should just man up and you just be more tough. And at some point I started to read about highly sensitive people. And I was like, yes, that's me. I'm a highly sensitive person. But I never really understood how that worked. And then when I saw my own human design, I saw in the body grab, and this is getting technical, but when people know more about it, when you put in your date of birth, time of birth and place of birth, you get a so-called body graph and you will see nine centers in your body graph. And for me, five out of nine centers are open or undefined. They are white in the graphic, which means that I'm very open to other people's energy. And Ah. that explains why I am so sensitive. And it's not like a thing that I need to change, but it's a talent that I can use, but I need to be aware of it. So I need to be aware when I'm around people. I pick up on people's emotions. I pick up on people's moods. I pick up on the atmosphere. I know when something is off. I just feel a lot of things. I always joke when I'm at a funeral, I cry harder than the widow. Mm, But that has everything to do with my open centers because I feel so much. And like I said, it's a talent because in my work with my clients, it's amazing that I feel so much because I know when something, someone is not in alignment, when someone is saying, yeah, I'm fine. And I know they're not fine. Mm. I just know and I feel it, I sense it. And that's a great talent. But I need to be aware when I'm in a huge group of people, I need to protect my own energy. So I have some, you know, some some tactics and strategies to to do that. So that's one example. The other is, and that's more business related. Uh, When I started my business, especially in the online space, we learn, you know, how to sell. We learn how to launch, like traditional launching of programs and courses. And that's what I did. I I tried it all the time. Like, oh, I need to run a challenge. I need to do a masterclass. I need to have a moment when cart is open. I need fast action bonuses. You know, all these things. I need that. I need to send like a hundred emails to my list about my launch. Uh, But it never worked for me. And I never understood why, because I was like, what's wrong with me? Why isn't it working? But then I found out that I'm a generator. And generator's strategy, the generator strategy, is waiting to respond. So whenever I sell something, it needs to be in response. It's not Mm. that I can just initiate something out of the blue. And that's what I had done with my launches. And the launches failed because I didn't respond. I was initiating. And that's what I'm not supposed to do as a generator. So that made such a big difference. And then when I started changing that, like, okay, I'm not going to launch anymore, not in the traditional sense. So for instance, since now I don't have launches, but I have an ongoing group program where people can join anytime they want and they can leave anytime they want. So it's so much easier now. And I really stopped doing the things that didn't work for me. So those are just two examples. I have so many more, but these I think are the most clear examples of how it made a difference in my life. Yes, that is amazing. And as you were talking about the first example, I, I definitely definitely empathize with you. Maybe I'm about to say I'm an empathetic person. So there's that word in my head, but I have done multiple different personality things before that have said that that's one of my things is empathy. And which means I'm absorbing emotions from people and I'm, you know, able to see or not see, but feel that from people. And I realized just a little anecdote from my own life that the fact that I was a teacher was very difficult for me in some settings because because I was taking on the emotions of yes. 28 teenagers. And some days that was really rough. Yes. So it was good to learn that. And so I can definitely see how learning some of these things through human design would be very powerful. Yes, absolutely. And you know, that's also in my design that I really want to understand why things are the way they are. So and having the human design, I got the explanation of, you know, this is who you are. So don't try to change it because you cannot change it. 
over the past few years as a network marketer, I wanted an authentic way that I could focus on the power of mindset and being myself and create a business. And I found the Social Selling Academy with Kristen Boss. I have learned so much about social selling and direct selling. And if you think that would be great for you too, go to www.bit.ly forward slash SSAOMG and grab your $100 off link there. So, and that's, that's a very, a question that I get a lot. Like, does your design change over the years? But it doesn't. Your design doesn't change. What can change is how you decide to start living according your, to your design. That's what can change. And then things will really shift and become a lot more easy and fun. And um, yeah, it, it's making a lot of difference. So the idea is to take these traits that you learn about yourself and the, and the, I'm I'm struggling with how to even say it and to take what you learn about how you function and then use it kind of for good and not evil, just to say it in kind of yeah. a funny way, right? Yeah. Use it for the positive. Yeah. So yeah. what happens a lot when I work with my clients on their human design, first of all, when I do the reading with them, the, the thing that is always happening is that people feel incredible relief that I'm like, they are like, oh, I, I haven't been crazy all those years. I knew this about myself, but I always thought that it wasn't right, that it wasn't good enough. But this is who I am and this is how I'm wired. So first of all, there's relief. Then second, it's a, a huge permission slip to be who you really are at the core. And that's what people have been trying to do for many, many years, to try to fit in, to try to fit into a mold, to live up to expectations of others or try to people please others. Um, so there's a lot of conditions going on and when we talk about their human design they're like oh my goodness yeah I was like that when I was a child but I changed the behavior because I thought that was more effective but it never sat well with me and then people really start to I would say get rid of all the layers the old layers of the learned behavior that they took on and that is not serving them anymore and that's that's a beautiful thing to witness and especially when they make it really practical and apply it to business. And that's, you know, that's my best. I would say my my yeah my my best area to work in. Yes. And you know that's such a fabulous connection for the listeners of this podcast too because right before we're having this conversation there is a podcast episode where I'm talking about the labels that people give us in life and how that affects us. And I gathered information from people who just kind of sent me anonymous stories about how it had affected them the way their parents or whoever whoever described them. And so what you're saying is exactly kind of what I was saying is that we live by these labels. But originally, when we were kids, we were our real self. Kids don't know any better. Exactly. And then we started kind of piling on these definitions. Yeah. And letting that go, yeah, is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And that, and for that, human design is a great tool. And and I also emphasize on the fact that it's a tool. It's never supposed to be a means, like a goal in itself. Like, oh, I need to know my human design. Sure, it's great. And there are many layers, as there are many layers to our personality. But it's never a goal in itself. It's always a means to an end. And it's a great guideline to live your life by. But it's not like a layer. So in my case, I'm a generator. Like, oh, you're a generator. And you cannot be anything else. <laughs> That's not Good the point. case. That's not the case. Good point. Because sometimes I think we do take a, a test result from whatever it is and we say, okay, this is the law. Yeah. And so that's a good point. Yeah. 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 You know, especially when we look at, for instance, disc colors or the inside colors, I meet so many people and they say, yeah, I'm a very red person or I'm a very blue person. And I'm like, well, you're not just blue. You're also other colors. <laughs> yes. 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 There's always gray areas forgive the color word yeah. there, but there's always gray areas Absolutely. in between for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing that people are now getting quite curious about finding out their human design. So if somebody does want to know this, uh, where would you point them? What should they do? Yeah. So there is this great website by the founder of human design and it's called mybodygraph.com. And 
when you go there, you put in your date of birth, time of birth and place of birth, you get your human design and you can read and if you want, you can have it read to you. So there are great basic information on that website. And I don't give give it my own to my own website because this is like the founders. This is the origin of human design. Right. And once people know, because they get the information, they are like, yeah, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. How do I use it? Well, then they come to me, which is great. <laughs> I see. I see. So someone has their result and they come to you to help them to apply it, yes. to understand it and yeah. apply it. Yeah. So first of okay. all, when they give me their uh, results or they can give it to me and I can get it for them, that's, that's also fine. I do a really extensive reading with them. So we meet either in person or online and we we explain the the design they get a report so they get it all in print uh, they get a video and and all of that so they uh, because it's a lot of information what you get when you with human design just a few weeks ago one of my clients said oh it's like learning a whole new language uh, and I can relate to that because there is so much there's so much slang in there and you really need some time to process all of that. And especially when it's about describing your personality, who you are, how you're wired, that takes some processing. So uh, so then, yeah, that's the way we do it. And that's when people can start using it and start applying it. And, and that's, that's the fun bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask you, what are some of the key benefits that a person could expect from doing this and going through this process? And I feel like you've kind of already answered that but I'll still ask maybe there's more yeah. to say yeah well there's absolutely more to say so what it does the benefits is that first of all you will see your strengths and it, they are crystal clear they are like in your face you cannot miss them so that's first second is that it shows you your best decision making method and very often intuitively people already do that but sometimes they get still get surprised by, oh, wow, yeah, this is the way I take decisions. So you get to know your decision-making process, your best decision-making process. You get your own strategy to navigate life and business. So, and by strategy means how can we make life easy for you? So for instance, in my case, I'm a generator. So my strategy is waiting to respond. So it's not for me to initiate and to, you know, sell things out of the blue or contact people like, hey, I want to be on your podcast. Hey, I want to be on your podcast. So what happened also in our case, you put out a request and I responded. And that is yes. my best strategy. And I think, you know, there is this famous Nike quote, just do it. Yes. And many people take that on as a truth, but it's only for 9% of the entire population. So for only for one energy type, and that's for manifestors. Just do it is only made for manifestors, and the rest, the other ninety-one percent, is really supposed to do something to do something else. So, and that's what it does too. It shows you what you can do to navigate life with ease, and it shows you what you can stop doing and don't even go there anymore. When people tell you, like, "Oh, yeah, but you should do it," just check it with your design and your strategy, and then you'll be fine. Right. So, it's doing things that work and stop doing things that don't work. And I think that is the best uh, benefit from knowing your human design. Wow, I I would definitely agree. And especially for those of us who are entrepreneurs in some sense, whether it's podcast hosts, or we have our own business or whatever, the style we use to create our business is a big deal. Absolutely. And so yeah, that's huge. And I would say if you're listening, and you're not an entrepreneur, you have a job, you work in a company or whatever, these things would still matter. Maybe I'm guessing it affects how you're going to get along with your co-workers yes. and projects and that kind of thing. Is that Yeah, fair? because it affects, you know, communication, it affects collaboration, it affects, uh, you know, what works for you, literally, when it comes to being in a physical space with other people, mm -hmm. uh, how you express yourself, 
whether or not you find it easy to express yourself. Uh, so there are so many elements in your human design that can give you some great insights. And whether you're an employee or self-employed, it's, it's an incredibly valuable asset to have. It sounds like it for sure. Well, I will definitely be doing mine. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you and do this episode before I did so that I could learn a little yes. bit more. So that's excellent. And I know that you have a podcast that I want to refer everyone to as well called Design Your Success. So tell us a little bit about that also. Yeah, so the podcast is called Design Your Success. So it is uh, has, of course, it has a link with human design and it has a strong link with entrepreneurship. So the podcast is all about business and human design. So how do you apply human design in business? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will make sure that that is in our show notes today as well. Great. It's called Design Your Success. Yes. And your website as well. I'll make sure Wonderful. that that's in our show notes. So if this has gotten you curious the way it has me, then everyone can go and have a look and see what your human design is and then reach out to you for help in interpreting that. I love that. Excellent. Excellent. I am so much enjoying that I can hear in the background that that there is a bell yes. ringing or something I'm where so you sorry. are. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's the, our nearby church, and it's always okay. ringing at six thirty on a Thursday. <laughs> There we are, 6.30 on a Thursday. Okay, well, it was reminding me of Boats on the Water, actually, for some reason. It was reminding me that you are in the Netherlands. Yes. And I just always think that that's cool because I'm sitting here just outside of Washington, D.C., and we're able to do this together. Yes. So that is pretty neat. I love that. Yeah, I love technology, that we're so connected so easily. And uh, yeah, absolutely. I fully agree. Well, thank you so much for going through this with me. And I really do think that people are going to be fascinated. And I know that I am. And personally, really any tool that's fairly easily accessible, that's going to help me to feel like I'm acting as my best self. And ideally, one thing I say on this podcast all the time is let's live well without all the angst and worry. This feels like a way to maybe let some of the angst go Absolutely. of trying to sort of be what we're not. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, absolutely. For me, it's always a tool to be your unapologetic self. Yeah, and it's it's a great way to get there. So, and, and I truly believe that if everyone really connects to their core and be who they are meant to be, who were, were meant to be when they were born, I truly believe the world is be getting a better place. And I really want to con contribute to that. Oh my goodness. The, what a wonderful way to wrap up this episode. I fully agree with that. I hope, listeners, that you have enjoyed it. Thank you again, Nicole. Thank so you. much. Thank you, Cheryl. So listeners, you know that I love to ask all of my podcast guests, what song is your favorite song to lift your mood, raise your vibration? We all need that sometimes. And Nicolene's answer is Unstoppable with Sia. And I love that song. So look for it on the Mood Lift OMG Teach Me playlist on Spotify and enjoy your day. I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode. OMG, I would be so honored if you would take a moment, leave a rating and leave a review. Let's get this message out further into the world. Make sure you've subscribed as well. And why not grab a screenshot and share it on your social media? Now it's time to head down to the show notes and see the resources I mentioned. Go find what you love.